three, two, one. Hi, you guys, Ginger Cook here. This is story time, and it's also a test video because we had just installed all our new camera equipment and sound equipment for uh, being able to do live broadcasts on YouTube and also for our um, art school, online art school. So if this broadcast interrupts, uh, we're sorry. We started a minute ago and had to redo it. But basically, st story times are not tutorials, but I will be painting a uh, eight by 10 uh, uh, flor 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 floral meadow and a uh, kind of a country white church. As I tell you the story about my travels with Goodrun, my friend Goodrun to Germany back in around 1991. And I said, we had some fun things that, to share with you and I'll be painting along. And remember, story times, um, again, I told you are not tutorials. The paintings have been pre-sold in a December of 2023 in November last year, we did a promotion where people that were taking art lessons from us online, our Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting, if they if renewed their membership or added another year to it, they got an original painting. And this is going to be one of the original 8 by 10 paintings that I'll be doing. And I thought, gosh, as long as I'm painting, um, might as well share you know some of the experience with you too. And I'll tell you a few stories. How's that? So I'm going to come on back down here to the uh, table, John. Is this the camera should be able to switch then, yes and yes? I did indeed. So it hasn't switched to me on my what I'm no, seeing. You, you, again, you only see you I, or this whole table. Aren't I supposed to see in the little mirror in here? In this one down here on the lower No, it's monitor? in the upper one. Oh, only on the upper monitor then. Okay. Would you rather have, on, would you, rather have you on? You can only be in one or the other. Oh, this is I fine. can swap where they are, or you live where they are. Well, let's, let's try this for now, okay? Okay. All right. So um, my canvas is blue, and I'm going to be... Somebody suggested, what a retired video producer suggested, I tell people the brushes I'm using, even though this is not a tutorial. But most of you guys know that the brushes I use 99.9% .9 of the time are uh, a silver... Uh, Bristol on angle brushes from 3 8 inch, quarter, 5 8 That's what I use all the time. So as I'm painting this, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my friend Gudrun. I met her uh, when she was visiting an art gallery I was in in, um, uh, in Houston down there at the Willowbrook Mall. And she and her husband had come in and I was showing art there. And they were, they were just the nicest couple. They had Moved, they were both uh, born in Germany and they were on, kind of here on a temporary visa. I mean, they thought it was not a temporary visa. It turned out it was. Uh, that was another story about the, the, losing the visa thing here. But anyway, they were here for a few years. And, and George and I and uh, my friend Kathy Schuster and a bunch of us all became friends with them because they're just a delightful couple. And uh, Gudrun, uh, I think she tried painting a little bit, not much, but anyway, we became good friends, and um, so so she had to, she and her husband uh, decided to open a gift store in a place in Texas called, uh, right, right above, you know, north of Houston called Old Town Spring, and if you ever visit Houston, Texas, Old Town Spring really is a must to see. It's all these tiny little shops. They're you know, when you go to the, even an airport, you'll see a shop. It's a shop that's like a chain of shops you can find anywhere in the world. But the people that um, own these uh, businesses there in Old Town Spring, they're unique. Each one is, there's like three or four streets. There's little tea houses. It's cute, okay? And um, they have little festivals. And anyway, they had this tiny little shop. And they were selling like uh, cuckoo houses and um, cuckoo clocks and, and, um, birdhouses and all kind of, I guess I would say they were um, uh, German su souvenirs, right? That probably was what I would call it. Now, what's interesting, because her husband absolutely hated all that stuff, you know, well, I mean, you know, traditionally, if you think about Texas, blue bonnets are the, you know, the flower of the state, but not everybody likes blue bonnets. So why you wouldn't, I don't know, but, you know, let's just entertain the possibility that maybe not everybody does, okay? So, anyhow, there came a time when Gudrun had to go back to Germany to uh, go shopping, 
and buy more stuff for the store. And she asked me if I wanted to come with her. And I thought that sounded fun. I mean, who, who, yeah, doesn't that sound fun? So I said, sure, I'd love to come. Now, this was probably right about, uh, the wall had come down, it came down in 1990, the, the wall in, in um, East Germany and um, West Germany uh, were now one country. And you could visit, you could visit it. In Berlin, you know, there was a east and a west side to Berlin. So this was fun. I mean, not a lot of people had seen it yet. And when you went into uh, what would be formerly East Germany, what was interesting about that was that um, it hadn't changed very much. It was like time had stood still for 50 years while everything else had moved on. I mean, that was the impression I got as a tourist, all right? So um, just keep in mind that these are all impressions that an American has as a tourist going over there, right? Now, before we started off, we went in the fall, which is not an ideal time to visit Europe because it's rainy and cloudy. And, uh, and, but you know, I wasn't worried about that because I grew up in Seattle, Washington. And one of the things that Seattle's famous for is it's rainy, cloudy days, and particularly in the winter and fall. So, I mean, you went to school in the rain and you went caught the school bus in the rain and, you know, rain, rain are us is Seattle, right? And so I was thinking, you know, trying to figure out what to bring. And I remember saying that I thought what I'd, I, I would go get, it doesn't rain that much in Houston. And if it does, you just stay inside, you know. But, well, I mean, it doesn't rain. It does rain a lot in Texas, but you know, I don't go out in it, right. But there we would, it might catch it, we would be wandering around and looking at things. And I'd have to, you know, um, be able to, uh, to, uh, you know, stay dry. So I told her, I, I ordered some galoshes. Now, for those of you who do not know what galoshes are, Gudrun had never heard of them. Um, they're like a plastic shoe that goes over like your other shoes. And they have like a little, maybe a little rubber band with a button and you just kind of hook that on the shoe. And um, that's what they, that's what they do, right? You see, back in my day, those were called rubbers. They were called rubbers? Uh-huh. You would put on your rubbers. Well, yeah, nowadays rubbers. you couldn't use that, could you? But no, can't use that nowadays. Nope. But um, <laughs> uh, but you know, when I was in, they were called galoshes, and everybody had them. My mother had them. I had them. All the kids at school had them. You came to school with galoshes. You took them off when you got to school. You didn't wear them at school. You took them off. So I came over to Goodrun's house, and now you know, Goodrun came from a line of. For, for a group of people that just define neatness, you know what I mean? They, they, they're sock folders are us, you know what I mean? That's them. <laughs> sock folders are us. You know, you could have licked her kitchen floor, it would have been fine. Nobody would have died, that kind of thing. Though why you'd want to lick the kitchen floor, I don't know. But nonetheless, if a cookie fell on it, it would be perfectly safe to pick it up, yeah? So I showed her the galoshes. And she was just horrified. She says, you can't wear those. I said, why? Why not? Everybody, nobody wears those. I said, yeah, actually they do. She says, not in Germany they don't. She <laughs> says, I can't, be, I can't be seen with the person wearing those. She was, that's what she said to me. I can't be seen with the person that would wear those. I'm going, oh my word, you know, because they're just galoshes. You know, they're, they're you know, I'm not going to be wandering around looking at old castles in high heel shoes. You know what I mean? I, I'm for comfort. You know, I'm telling you what. Um, Crocs, baby, Crocs. They're Crocs, right? That's what I wear, Crocs, you know? And um, so when I found Crocs, I'm going, plastic bedroom slippers you can wear outside. They're perfect, right? But <laughs> just, man, she was really upset. Now, what's funny to me, right, was that... Um, I had another friend from, from Europe some years later. She was from Bulgaria. And maybe you heard over the news last, um, this last weekend that there was a, that the church, Joel Olstein's church uh, there in, in Texas, the third largest uh, church in the United States, you know, congregation, not necessarily the building, but the people, had had an incident where there was a, um, someone had come in and, uh, and shot up the, you know, there was a gun battle and a little boy was, I don't know if he, if he lived or not, and this crazy woman came in to do damage to the church. Well, 
Dee Dee came over, my friend Dee Dee came over to America because of Joel Olstein's dad, who was, had the church before he did, and they brought over all these Europeans to um, that were from communist countries with the idea, and I, I think it was clever, just to let see let them see how people yeah. lived, lived in the United States. Yeah, how did they live? And maybe the contrast. You know, there's a contrast here. That's what I would say. You know, so she came over with a group of her. Uh, friends that you know, or at least uh, maybe you should know them all, but she came up with a group of people from Bulgaria. And she was talking to, Dee Dee said she was talking to one lady after the service, and um, the, the lady, somebody had asked her, Well, what did she think of the you know, the service, and what did she think of the congregation? And so she says, Oh my gosh, she says, the shoes those people wore. <laughs> To church, she says, I wouldn't feed my ducks wearing those shoes. So, I mean, I guess there's some groups that have really, really give a rip about shoes. I, you know, you couldn't sell a $5,000 pair, pair of high heels to people if people didn't have some sort of bizarre belief that they were better, right? I just, you know, there's a Barnum and Bailey says, you know, there's, you know, you can't, you know, one comes along every second or whatever that is. What was the, you know what I'm saying, right? And I don't mean to be mean, but honestly, honestly, people, $5,000 for a pair of hot shoes. And if you were wearing them and I would have, no, and trying to impress me, I would have no idea you had them on. Though, conversely, when we're talking about shoes, I know I get a little sidetracked from Goodwin, but um, uh, the... Um, when um, I had my art show in New York City, that from uh, I won this paint liquid tax paint a difference comp competition, and um, my half sister um, and her um, she was elderly she was in her eighties and a, a man from her church took her kind of as her escort she used to laughingly call him her boyfriend but he was just a volunteer at the church that looked after older people and she wanted to come to my art show. So he took her, and my husband, uh, George Cook at the time, had made some disparaging remark about the guy, saying, did you see he had a hole in the bottom of his shoes? I said, who looks at shoes? I No, I didn't see a hole. If I didn't see how, I've never looked for holes in the bottoms of anybody's, sho every, anybody's shoes. And I'm wondering if that's not a guy thing, too, John, that, that guys sort of, you know what I mean, they don't have, they can't, I don't know, maybe that's a guy thing that they do that stuff. But I tell you what, I was um, horrified that he even said that. I said, no, I didn't notice that, by the way. So anyway, so back to Goodwin. So she made it quite clear there were no galoshes. So I was just resolved to get my feet wet. thought it was so, sort of stupid. But, you know, I mean, I was her guest, and if, I couldn't come if I brought the galoshes, then okay, the galoshes can stay. I mean, I'm not an unreasonable person. You can, you know, again, dumb as can be, as far as I'm concerned, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard, at least one of them, you know, goes up to the top 10. But anyway, um, so good. So we, anyway, we ended up, I didn't take the galoshes and we ended up, um, uh, ending up going over to Germany, and um, we went to her dad's. Her dad had, had moved to um, Berlin, or you know, in that area, into East Germany, because his wife inherited a, a pharmacy, a little pharmacy, that um, that when the, uh, the when the wall went down, a lot of reparations were done. They returned people's property that had been taken in in, in the war. You know, like after the war, when they closed off the you know, made that border. Some people didn't have, um, uh, you know, they lost their property, their house, and their. So there was this pharmacy and home that was attached to it, and so they had taken it over. So we went, you know, our we we stopped first at her dad's. Okay, he was so cool. He picked us up at the airport. He was lovely, and um, we stopped at her dad's, and um, and we stayed with her dad, and he had a. Uh, there was an empty, like, there was like a guest room basement thing that I stayed in and Goodwin stayed in a, 
Another zoom, guest room they had. Excuse me for a second. Yeah? I'm going to zoom in on your face because we're trying to get your mouth synced with the sound. So we're going to your face now. Talk okay. to the audience. All right. So, you know, I talk about sock folders, right? Those are the neat people that fold their socks a little and hey, match hey, them in hey, colors hey. in the store. Yeah? Yeah. You know that, right? Well, Gudrun's father's, it was, wasn't her mom, it was the second wife drugstore was so neat that I've never seen a business that I mean there wasn't a speck of dust everywhere all the little everything in the drugstore was um, perfectly in order it was I, I just you know how you get into a place and you're going it was unimaginable how neat this was and I'm thinking okay and their house was like that too and that's how that lady kept it and that would be exhausting to me because um you know, you don't often see, not, I'm sorry, I'm not being facetious, but you don't often see in a cemetery that the, the um, on the tombstones, they usually don't say she was a good housekeeper. Mm, kind, loving, all that stuff. But good housekeeper isn't even the top 10 things that are in gravestones. I don't think I've ever seen it ever. But anyway, some people carry on like that might be on there someday if they try really hard. And his... Her, mo her mother, uh, stepmother, really was like that. Now, how's the sinking up of the voice, John? Okay, we, we're we still off. You can go back down for a little bit. So... We still need a little bit more. All right, so we're still... This is a test, you guys, all right, of what we're trying to do here. So anyhow, the... Um, so we borrowed her dad's car... And um, which was really nice of him because I mean, Gudrun could have rented a car, they weren't poor. She and her husband, Wolfgang, weren't poor, who rented her dad's car. And uh, we took off to travel around the country looking for things to go in the gift shop. Uh, one of the one of the places we went was their equivalent of, say, our Costco or Home Depot, you know, our Costco. And we got, and she had a whole shopping cart full of stuff, okay, of things that, you know, I don't know what it all was, but she had, she was extremely happy with the result of her outing, all right, which was good. I'm happy she was happy, yeah, and uh, let's see, this needs to be like that. One more look at the camera, please. Okay, looking at the camera one more time. Let's see if we're seeing it. So anyway, and and then we and then we had this like list of places we had to go. So she did. She had like um, hand blown Christmas ornaments that was made in one place, and there were um, I don't know all the places we went to. And the funny thing about it is that um, as we were traveling, we got really lost, and we discovered we were in a totally wrong town from where we had reservations to spend the night. We were not in the right town at all. Now, and we said, well, let's just go find a hotel and we'll stay, we'll see what's in this town. This is interesting. And then we were thinking about it saying, you know, if we had been traveling with our husbands, the difference would have been we would have found the town we were supposed to be in <laughs> if we got there at two in the morning this is where we're going. We're not just going to stop here because you got lost. This is dumb, right? But actually, it wasn't dumb. We stayed in this really cute old hotel and had these giant, giant teddy bears. I would have loved it in the lobby. And if you guys remember the Stife teddy bears, oh, the Stife, they were the very the best, right? of teddy bears. Well, they, when, after the war... Um, the the got the the company split in half. Some of the people ended up in East Germany, and the rest of the family ended up in um in, in, in you know most of, most of them ended up in West Germany, and some people got out to the west, and they kept making the Steiff bears, and the Russians wouldn't let them make them. They made other stuffed toys, and so this was this rare collection of Steiff bears that they were starting to make, and. There was a really neat one I bought, and it had a pen and everything. I remember giving them to Honey, and they have since been lost over time. But um, anyway, so we have found these neat teddy bears that went in her store. We went and saw the company and everything, and that was kind of neat, yeah. 
So, I mean, there was a lot of good things that, uh, you know, just because it wasn't the trip we were supposed to be, it was where we were supposed to be because she didn't have teddy bears to sell, and she did very well with those teddy bears, okay? So that was a good thing. So how's the, how's the sound going now and everything, John? We're, we were closer. We're not quite there yet. Okay. So uh, this is why we're doing this broadcast early like this, because... Um, we want to make sure that um, we've got all the equipment dangled up here. So, you know, we we drove. It was really interesting. We and we just didn't go uh, go shopping like that. We went to like um, like we saw. She wanted to make sure that I had a good time, not just shop for her stuff. So, we went to this one castle where the um, the first translation of the Bible and um, was done, I've forgotten, Gutenberg or something like that, was done in this one castle, this guy, and we saw these, I don't know, we saw some neat stuff, and um, there was this one, and this castle was it was in a big, a large plain, and then there was this a hill all by itself, and it took you almost half a day to climb up to the top, and they had no water up there, they had to, had to catch the water with citrons, you know, like, or, you know, like capture it or call it back up. It it looked to me a little problematic, but anyway, um, back in the, the day, people did that, and and I remember a couple of the things I remember about that tour of that castle, and I would tell you the name of it. I don't remember, but what was interesting was there were these pillars that were in one of the main halls with the where it was a fireplace and these pillars, and at the bottom of the pillars. Um, all around the base of the pillars were these carved doves. And you thought how many winters somebody had sat in there and carved those doves, right? So, I mean, we had, ha, honestly, it was, um, it was a really interesting, uh, it was an interesting trip from so many, sta from so many standpoints as far as what we were doing and, um, uh, and how much fun, you know, we had a lot of fun. And, and of course, we were, we were snackers. And um, that's, you know, when you go on a road trip, what do you do? You, well, I'll tell you what you do. You go on a road trip, you stop at, every time you stop at a gas station, you get some candy and stuff, right? So we had this pile of stuff in the car, right? Where we've been eating. And um, I mean, you know, we were having a good time. So when it came time to drive back to, to the house to return this car that her dad had kindly loaned us, right? Um, I realized that uh, one of the pieces of candy had rolled under the seat to a way where neither one of us could get at it, one of the candy bars. And I thought, that, man, his dad is, her dad is not going to like this at all. <laughs> I mean, you don't understand how these are sock folders to the max, right? Like they, they make socks so normal sock folders look sloppy, and the idea that there'd be some couple of, I think it was a couple of them that had gotten under the seat somehow, and we couldn't get them out. So I said, and Gudrun was, you know, getting kind of panicked because we couldn't bring the car back like that. I said, we have to stop and wash the car. She said, what? You can't bring the car back. It was interesting that this. She was clueless about this. I said, you can't bring the car back to your dad. We have to stop and wash it, right? Got to bring it back the way you got it, Gudrun. Sometimes kids are a little funny with their parents. You know what I mean? Oh, dad, he won't care, right? Well, yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Maybe some dads wouldn't care, but I had a feeling this dad would care. So she says, I don't know what I'm going to do. So let me try the hair dryer. Are you up for that? Yeah, I am. I'm going to try the hair dryer to dry this real quick, okay? <laughs> So we're going to see what happens with the hair dryer when she's doing it. If you guys can still hear me, she should be muted. So you should hear me with this new setup. So do let me know if you can hear me, even though the hair dryer is in the background, how well you can hear me if you can hear me at all. Again, this is only a test for the next 60 seconds. Oh, test is over. How was that, the hair dryer? Oh, I don't know. It looked good on my charts yeah was well, anybody making any comments we'd love I, to well, hear we're delayed like a second or two okay well no sound with the hair dryer can hear you perfect yes can hear you but you're fuzzy i'm always look at the beard of course i'm fuzzy i'm a bear 
We're here by you, but staticky. Okay. I hear. Now, when I'm talking now without her doing the hair dryer, how does it sound when I'm normally talking? And it could be because of the way the, the, the stifling device works. So, can't hear the hair dryer, but it can hear you even through. But could you understand me even when it was staticky? I mean, I wouldn't carry on a whole conversation, but at least, at least you don't have to listen to the hair dryer. The pains we go through for you people, you have no idea. Well, okay. Do they, do they have any idea? Probably not. No. Okay, we're going to do, um, we're really close on the lip sync. All right. The sound is still first, so I've got to delay it. Let's see where we have it now. We're at 90. And it's still first. Okay, I'm going to go to 95. Okay, they don't know what that means, but okay. No, you don't worry about this. So, you know, this, this is for the stuffy staff people. You know, they understand. Okay, so now, all we, right. So back okay, where we so, left last. Okay, wait, wait. Come up to the top. Talk to the camera. Okay, so when we last left you, we, we were in the dome. We had convinced Goodwin we had to fill up the car with gas. And, and um, which she wasn't going to do, and wash it. And then we cleaned out all the candy wrappers, but there's still this candy that was stuck under the seat. And she says, oh, my God. And I said, oh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go buy a bunch of candy and hide it and hide it all over the car and tell them it was a surprise for him. It was a game he could find them. And we'll, we'll pretend like we did it deliberately. Seriously, so we did. We bought a bunch of candy, put some under the visors, you know. Get, get some of it you could see, some of it you couldn't. And it was a candy hunt, and we made up this game for her dad in thanking him for the car, even though the whole reason we did it was so he wouldn't discover that we couldn't get the stupid candy out where we had it. I mean, that's thinking on your feet, don't you think, John? Yeah? That is. That is. You know, so we did that. And again, I think it's an interesting when kids, kids treat their parents differently than, of course, than guests do, but even... You know, at the point where, you know, Goodwin was brought in her late 40s. So her dad's in her 80s, right? 70s, 80s. And um, you know, at some point, you know, you've got to be the, you know, the adult, right? Why? Sort of. I don't know. Maybe a little bit of the no. adult. But, you know, um, I don't know, John, but it seems to me like um, it might not be a terrible thing. So... Um, uh, we're back, and then our, our next thing was to go to, um, we, our, our next scheduled stop was to take the train um, and go to um, and go to Poland. And Gudrun thought if we took the night train that um, uh, then we'd have all, we'd have the daylight to be spending in Poland, and we'd spend maybe two nights in Poland at a hotel. She wasn't sure where, and then because um, Poland hadn't been that long released from being behind the Iron Curtain, right? So we weren't sure how that was going to work. But anyway, that's that was the plan. Okay. So Dad took us to the train station, and uh, we got on this train that looked like it was. Uh, you know, an, uh, like from World War II, it was the oldest train, and it had uh, we had a car, a sleeping car, that had three bunk beds. Three. Uh huh. So, so it could sleep six. Yes. Yeah, some well, it's a twin, twin bunk beds. So you had to. They were stacked one, two, three. Oh, oh three I high. Guess, it's three a three high. tier. Okay. Yeah, three high. And um, I, there's no way, even back then, that I was going to be able to climb up any on any of those bunk beds, right? <laughs> there was another girl there, and she had she was from East Germany. She had just she had been born when it was still communism on her side, and she was traveling to Poland. She was younger; she was like in her twenties. And. Um, uh, what was interesting, it was that like the bathroom was down the train hall and then you went in there 
and there was like this very smelly, nasty bathroom. It was nasty, right? And um, the uh, there was like a you could see the tracks where you could flushed out onto the train tracks. <laughs> I kid you not. You could do what? You, the toilet flushed onto the tracks. You know, like in the old days, the airplanes used to just dump the sewer out in the sky and let it fall on land. Remember that? No. Yeah. In the old days, what do you think those toilets got dumped? They got dumped out in the air. Yeah, I know. It's shocking. Remember the time back when I was a kid, there was a block of that this toilet had dumped on one of these airplanes, maybe one of the reasons they stopped doing that, and this block of ice had frozen, and this block of toilet ice fell through these people's houses. Do you remember oh. that story? No. Oh. Yeah. So, I mean, you could, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not pointing fingers here, because we... It sounds to me like you're pointing fingers. Yeah, well, that's what people did, right? That, that used to do, right? Or whatever, right? But, I mean, using the, it was nauseating. The train was rocking back and forth. And then, and then this lady comes in to our car, and she's got this German shepherd dog, and she's wearing tall boots, like, uh, like the Gestapo. And not a smile on the lady's face, and she's got whatever her deal is. It's, um, she was scary looking, man. And she, papers. We want to, we want to see your papers. Please, now, we see papers. Show papers. You, show papers. Where are your papers? You have papers? That kind of thing, right? Just what everybody needs, yes. So, anyhow, um, uh, we showed her the papers and then we moved along and then didn't think anything about it. And then a little while, and then she came. We were in another town of some kind, I think, because she came twice, I think, to see the papers. And she wasn't happy with this one girl we were traveling with. But anyway, we somehow got through all that. Got to do the hair dryer one more time. Okay, so she's doing the hair dryer one more time. I don't know if I need to lock it with my microphone. If I block my microphone like this, if it's less staticky, I just think it has to do with the program we're using to suppress it. Go ahead and talk to the fans one more time, please. I'm going to talk to the fans one more time. <laughs> All right, talking. So. You know, it was a long train. I mean, the train was going rattle, 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 right? And the you weren't sure who or what had been sleeping on that bunk bed before you had it, right? So, you know, you just sort of sleeping on top of it. And I didn't get any sleep that night. I don't know if Gudrun did. I, it was just um, an experience, right? I feel like I had been thrown back into time. So we get we get to Gdansk, which was where we were going, Gdansk, Poland. And we pull out, and it's in the, like one, in, it's like six in the morning or something. And there's a get off on the platform, and there's nobody there. There's no taxis or anything like that. We don't see anything. And um, we have no idea where to go, even right. I mean, we're just there in the middle of nowhere. And then trying, there's a big in the distance. There's a big sign that says hotel, you know. Because listen. Goodwin doesn't. Goodwin speaks German, but she doesn't speak Polish, so n none of us speak the language, right? And we're there, and apparently um, the 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 wall hadn't come down long enough for anybody to learn English or uh, German, apparently. So here we are, stuck in a, in, you know, and so we start, you know, we got our luggage, and we start kind of walking, uh, walking over to. Um, uh, Toward the hotel with our luggage kind of rolling it and we spy a taxi and we flag him down and he took us the rest of the way which was nice yeah which really was nice John because I didn't know how we were going to get there um, so we're in this very nice hotel and of course reception spoke English and Gudrun 
starts announcing to people that she's carrying $5,000 worth of cash and she intends to buy jewelry with it. And I'm thinking, God, did you not watch any television growing up as a child? I mean, nobody goes around in foreign countries, hey, by the way, I'm carrying a lot of money. Why don't you just hit me over the head and take it? I mean, I'm just sick of, you know, and I couldn't get her to stop doing it. She just made me cra crazy, right? I'm going, what are you doing, right? What so, was she trying to get out of that? Well, we had to, she wanted to see where she could buy amber. And, of course, you could go, we were going to buy amber. And um, I meant to bring up some of my amber jewelry so I could show you the stuff I got there, which was pretty nifty, Okay. But uh, anyhow, she um, uh, we we took a taxi down to this one section of um, uh, of of uh, it kind of no car area, kind of like a little area where they didn't allow cars and uh, and all these little you walk down the street, cobblestone street, pretty wide, and all these um, all these um, Vendors are selling, uh, you know, amber and different things and jewelry and whatever, art galleries and that kind of stuff, right? So we go into the first store and and she wants to see some amber. And, um, and then she says, yeah, that's nice, but I want to buy it where you bought it. Where did you get it? Where'd you, I'm here for wholesale. Where did you buy it? Well, why on earth would they tell her? You know what I mean? I'm just, I just, she's just, it's like she's from Mars, the way she's acting in this town, right? Because I, I don't get it, you know what I mean? I don't get it. So she's being rude as can be, in, in my opinion, right? Which comes off, comes off extremely rude, right? And uh, she's running around uh, demanding people tell her where, they, where they're buying the amber. And we keep going from shop to shop and looking at amber. And then she asks a loaded question. I'm here. I have $5,000 worth of American money on me, and I want to buy it. Um, I want to buy wholesale. I don't want to buy your prices, even though they were, you know, honestly, God, the prices were great, right? I was thinking, this looks pretty good. What's the matter with you? Oh, no. I have to, I have to buy it wholesale, she says. Really? Really. Honestly, I mean, I know. You just... And... This is why you should, you know, before you travel with a friend, decide if you still want them at the end of your journey. You know, that there used to be an old saying, before you lend, lend the money to a friend, decide which you need the most, right? But I really think before traveling with a friend, you better decide if you still, you know, if, if you, you know, because um, cause people have a different way of traveling. Um. And you may like everything about them until they until you go on a trip with them, and then you're going, OMG, right? What is wrong with you? Um, to sidetrack a little bit, some um, years ago, back when Cinnamon was a baby, we were still living in Aspen. My friend, good friend Ernie, and his Ernst, um, I talked about him before. He wanted to take a trip. He wanted to take one of the... Um, elders from the church uh, to see uh, um, the Grand Canyon and all that stuff because he'd never guy had never been out of New York and he wanted to do that as kind of a gift for the guy's vacation okay so we had gone in the motorhome and I had you know and you have to understand Ernst's wife was what my best friend at the time um, and I liked her a lot and I didn't dislike him um, and anyhow, I mean, he was, he was from Austria, sounded like Arnold Schwarzenegger. And anyway, when we were in this, we were traveling in this motorhome and, uh, I cooked dinner for one night and I'm cooking. The deal was that everybody chip in on the groceries and I'd cook because it was agreed that I was probably the best cook in the group. Don't you shudder because actually I'm not too shabby, John, sometimes. But anyway, um. Ernst wouldn't eat anything I made. I noticed that the first night he wasn't eating anything. He wanted a sandwich. He wasn't going to eat whatever I made. He wouldn't try it even. 
And they'd never, and I, I got back to thinking about it, they'd never been to our house. They were at our house all the time, all the time, but always after dinner. They'd never been to our house for any kind of meal. And um, so finally I said to Linda, I took her aside, and I said, okay, what's going on with her? And she's not eating my food. What happened? She said, oh, let it go. I said, I'm not letting it go. We've got three weeks, you know, two more weeks with you guys. What is going on? And she said, well, she said, what? She said, I don't want to hurt your feelings. I said, you better tell me, right? Hurt my feelings, hurt my feelings. Yeah, regardless of my feelings, please tell me, what is it that I am doing that is so offending your husband, right? And she said, well, when you're cooking, you taste it with a spoon and then put it back in the dish. This gives us the extra flavor. Um, and I had thought about it. I did do that. I was just on some kind. I'd only been cooking for Colby and me, so I never thought about it, right? I mean, it really probably was gross if you thought about it. I just didn't know I was doing that. I said, oh, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. So I was glad that we got to the bottom of that because then I just quit doing it. I had two spoons, you know. I had to do a two-spoon uh, t- t- test because obviously you couldn't um, couldn't do that, right? So anyway, that's that's what I mean. I mean, you just don't know when you're traveling with people. And then I remember when we were traveling in this, on our motorhome, uh, the, the other uh, the other thing that Ernst wanted to do was we had no no itinerary. We just were going to drive around and see stuff, right, in the Southwest, Bryce. Canyon and all that stuff. Eventually Grand Canyon. We're going to see all these things. But we didn't have an itinerary when we have to be anywhere. So we had no reservations for campgrounds or anything. We're just going to have to stop for the night um, somewhere. And he said he didn't want to stop anywhere there wasn't water. What? Yeah, I have to go swimming every night. That's a thing with me. Well, good for you, right? Good for you. You <laughs> Really? Where are we supposed to find a campground with water in the middle of friggin' nowhere? We're lucky to find a place to hook up with some electricity and watch a little television. Now you have to have water too? Honestly, gosh, you know, the, the prince over there, the, uh, I was just, I was just so annoyed, right? But, you know, that was his thing. And also he was buying the gas, it just, you know. So, of course, Colby's nice. He went along with it, sure. We'd do that. Do anything for yours, we'll do that for you. But you know what's interesting is that we always found water. His intention was so strong. If you talk about traveling with intentions, if you believe any of that, you traveling with Ernst would Ernst would make you a believer because because we absolutely um, found a place for him to swim every stop, little rivers and things like that. Right? Absolutely. So, I mean, I think that's kind of, don't you think that's kind of interesting, John, in kind of a funny way, yeah. Well, that's his bath. What's that? That was the bath. What's back? <clears throat> the bath, taking the one to go swimming. You know, I'm missing something here. Oh, is that, you think that's what that was? Oh. <laughs> 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 okay. Okay. Oh, I just thought he was being unreasonable. Because, I mean, the campgrounds had showers and stuff, you, you know, when we That's stopped. not the same. Apparently not. No. Tell me, because obviously. Knows that. That was his bath. Okay. Well, anyway, so then um, Ernst was a lot older than Linda and kind of, he ran the show in their family. So, you know, we just, everybody kowtowed to him, so to speak. Um. But, you know, what what are you going to do, right? That's what he wanted to do, and that's what we did. So, uh, the other thing that was sort of, but again, that kind of travel can strain friendships, I guess is what I'm, I'm saying, right? Because everybody has their thing. I know that, for instance, when I was traveling with Gudrun, um, uh, she, the, the, you know, obviously the menus were in German when we were in Germany, 
and I'd ask for an English menu, and I'd look at it, and I'd say, this is it. This is all. <laughs> what these, else? These are my choices? Surely, surely they've got something else. This is what I'm, this is it? Really? And she'd look at me like, she's kind of horrified. Yeah, this is what we're having. And really, this is just, this is all there is, huh? Okay. So there was a little bit of that, too. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying I'm the best traveler either, but. Oh, you're a wonderful traveler. But you travel with me, John, right? I'm, I'm one a few of million people. miles. I, I'm one of these people, though, I like to be on time. I don't mind if we got, like, with Goodrin and then we got lost and stuff. That was fine. You know, I was good to one. You know, we didn't have an itinerary. We didn't have appointments with anybody. When we went to this one place, when we were traveling, before we got to Poland, I'll tell you, get back to Poland in a minute. We went to this one place, and um, uh, uh that they sold the Christmas ornaments and she was she was doing Christmas ornaments and I told her, I said, you know what you really ought to have for a Christmas ornament? And she said, what? I said, you ought to have a make a Bible. She says, um, why would I do that? I said, well, I don't know, this is Texas is where you're selling this. I'll tell you what, that's what I would do if I were you. I'd make sure you had a Bible. And then she had something and the Germans had, she had a pickle. And apparently in Germany, they put pickles under their Christmas tree, on their Christmas tree. That's one of their things. And um, apparently we, you know, we needed to have a pickle of some kind. Um, and so she sold, she sold these ceramic pickles. They're hand-blown glass is what they were, the ornaments. And she had a really nice wedding set that was pretty that she did. Um, so, and they were, and they custom made the ornaments for her and then they sent them, sent them to her. So it's kind of neat. And uh, so anyway, back to Poland. So we're we're wandering around with Gudrun with her big mouth shouting at the, the world that she's carrying all this money. And I intended to buy a little bit of amber too, but I figured if she was buying it, I would just pick out a few pieces that I wanted, right? And um, put them on the, uh, uh, you know, just kind of add them to the add them to the pile. That was my big plan. It was just add add them to the pile. Seems fair. Yeah, right? So, uh, which is, is, which is what I did, right? Um, you know, so, so when we finally, finally somebody caved, I mean, it was probably a couple hours of wandering around insulting the locals, uh, <laughs> before we got someone to tell us. And we went two blocks over. That was those were the wholesale factories. Two blocks over. So we went over there and we got, we met the owner of the um, the establishment, and uh, and he did he did sell wholesale to Goodrin. So she got the prices, and we I got some of the I've got I've got some amber pieces that would just shock you. They're so beautiful. Um, but, and nobody mugged us or anything like that, but not for, no thanks to her, man. <laughs> no thanks to her. And and again, it was another issue too, is that nobody, we didn't speak the language. That was a little bit of a problem. We didn't speak the language. Uh, So let's see, back to Goodrin. So anyhow, we uh, our our trip back from Poland, we we were it was in the daytime, so it wasn't one of those nighttime trains again. So we ended up back in in Germany. Uh, I don't know, not not too far uh, from where we back to her dad's house and we had a few more days before we went back to um before we went back to um the states so her dad very kindly offered to show me berlin and there was this castle that wasn't available before that uh, we could then see and there were some sites you could see now that the country was not divided and he showed us where the old wall was and there was a shopping 
there was a shopping um, area there now. I don't think that's too big, a, you know. So I mean that that was you know that was a lot of fun. And so then he's showing us all around, showing us all around um, Berlin, and the statues. And we saw this, like I say, this beautiful castle. And I got a bunch of photos of it. And um, it was uh, apparently the king at one time had um, this one particular king, I, I've forgotten who, but it turned out he was gay. And uh, he, he had a princess that of course he'd buried, but he had a castle that was strictly for men, women were not allowed. There were no women servants. It was only for only men, it was men only castle. Even the dogs were male, no female dogs. Apparently he had, he had some really strong feelings about this. And it was like a two bedroom castle huge grounds it was gorgeous um the one bedroom was painted hand painted with with parrots all over the walls in, in total detail it was pretty it was pretty a marvelous place and absolutely beautiful but it was you know so funny that that was his san sose was the name of the castle with it and i think it was translated to no no women allowed san sose san meaning no that was the that was the castle that was there in the, and we got to see that. So his dad was dad was really a sweetheart, and uh, like I say, he took us. He took me, you know, he took us to that castle, which was was lovely, you know. Huh. So. As we're driving around. Uh, Germany, uh, you know, around Berlin and stuff. He's in the car and he's showing me the sights. And then he came onto this one monument. He said, and that was, he was, you know, how every every country has monuments to the war and stuff, wars. This was a monument from World War One for the victory and World War One. And I said, it's for what? He said, it's for it's. For, it's a it's our victory monument for World War One, and I knew I was a guest at his house. I know it, and I know some giant hand wanted to put their hands over my mouth and go, "Ginger, don't say it, don't say it." <laughs> but before, because you know, my dad had been a judge on Nuremberg trials for World War Two, and he's quite frankly, this little group, this little country, had started some wars, right? That <laughs> they had, right? So I said. Didn't anybody tell you you guys didn't win World War One? That you guys lost that war? Nobody mentioned that in your history. <laughs> Just, they left that part out. So it was kind of a dead silence, and then Gudrun kind of covered for me, and there was some ch chat, chatting in German, and we all let it go. Okay. So technically, I guess because they signed an armistice, they never saw that as the defeat. You know, they'd signed some sort of armist thing, and so that that wasn't considered a defeat. But that, to me, was very fun because, you know, he's just I'm going. Wait, 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 wait. Um, I think you guys, uh, at least my understanding is that that's you know, it wasn't a victory. So he was still speaking to me when we got home. Bless his heart, right? And I figured I hadn't totally burned bridges with him. Yeah. Which is always good. You know, which is good because that was a rude, rude thing for me to say. I just should have kept my mouth shut and I didn't. But, um, uh, okay, that's not. Anyhow, so then Goodman and I decided to have a day shopping in Berlin. We would go downtown and and go shopping. That was our big plan. And so, I mean, it was interesting. When, when the thing that I noticed most about, and I started to understand more about the galoshes, was that even the oldest person was dressed up to like the max, like they were going to work or something. Everybody was beautifully dressed, you know, really nicely dressed. And, um, well, let's see, I think that one's gone. Let me just 
find another green here. Um, And the, everything was lovely, and I, I think we did, I did some shopping, I don't remember what I bought or anything, but we did some shopping. We did some shopping, and, um, but I, I realized I missed a segment. Before we go into that, when we were driving around before we returned your car, I got to go, we'll go back to the shopping, because I missed a part here about what I was going to tell you about that. When we were driving around before the car, we turned the car. We went and saw one of her oldest friends, and I couldn't tell you the name of the town, but we'd gone there for something, and I think it had something to do with what she was wanting to buy, too, as far as, um, uh, you know, stuff for her store. But anyway, we went to see this friend, and her friend was um, single, had been raised in America, but was German, quite hated Americans, as far as I could tell, sure didn't like me. I think she was annoyed with Goodwin and I. Not only did we go see her, but we announced, Goodwin announced we'd be spending the night there at her house. Now, I got to tell you that uh, this lady, her house was immaculate. Another one of those stock folders, right? But what made her house, to me, totally unique was that everything was black or white. There wasn't so much as a pink cushion or a pale green. or It was black or white. That's what everything was. And um, uh, perfect. Everything was neat. And she had ended up not going back to the States because back in when I was going to, when I was in high school, and she was probably closer to my age at the time, um, if you got pregnant, and a lot of families, that just didn't fly. You know what I mean? If you weren't giving the baby up for adoption or anything, you weren't. So she had gone from the States to, um, to, to Spain on a trip, like a vacation, you know. She was, I don't know, 17 or 18. And she fell in love with a Spanish young man who was, became a very wealthy family. And... Uh, Uh, he, she got pregnant. Who did? This lady that I was staying in her house. Hmm. And she couldn't go back to the States and she wasn't willing to have an abortion. So she ended up, uh, she ended up, um, she ended up going to Germany because she had some relatives there that helped her. But she couldn't go back. Her mother wasn't going to let her come home. So she spent all this time in Germany. And, and over that period of time, had was, was quite resentful of um, somehow of America. I don't know why, but, you know, she, well, I, I got the feeling that she didn't like anything about America. And she was a translator, her job was, because she spoke... I don't know how many languages she spoke a bunch of languages. Her job was as a translator for um, that uh, uh, sort of all kinds of companies that they hired her to translate. So she made good money. So we would have been fine. It was all right that she didn't like me. We would have been fine, right? Except I got to dry this, you guys. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> That's a reverse angle, taking her camera and shooting it down from the top down. Something a little different that we can do now.
Okay, so this is this Gudrun's friend we were spending the night at, right? And she would have been, like I say, she would have been in, she would have been fine with me, maybe. Except that, I mean, not really, but, you know, we could have been almost okay. But that morning, I was doing my hair and I plugged my hair dryer into one of her outlets and shut out, shut, and screwed up the electric for the whole house because I didn't know that there was a difference between German electricity and American electricity. I just brought my hair dryer. So she had to call an electrician out I wonder why. on a Saturday to get that fixed. So then we weren't staying in her guest house. And then he wasn't very happy about that. Okay, all right, so sorry. You know, I mean, you know, sorry. She should have uh, said something. And then um, nobody told me. And then, um, uh, you know, and if you don't, you know, if you just don't think about those things, right? So, um, anyhow, so then, um, so then we were, um, I was coming over to breakfast at her house after the, the, the debacle and I closed the door behind me and it locked automatically and I didn't have a key to get back in. And apparently I was in charge. Nobody told me that either and I was in charge of the key. So then we had to call out a locksmith. <laughs> To get back into the, the, I know you're going, you feel sorry for me, don't you? Because I'm just, I'm not trying to make this woman mad, but I just, she really just totally hates me now. And then Gudrun had to do some stuff downtown in uh, wherever we were. And um, so she had made arrangements for this lady who was stuck with me for the day to, um, to take, uh, to take me uh, to, to to an art museum. So I, I know she didn't want to do it. I felt really bad because I know she did not want to take me anywhere. Um, but uh, nonetheless, uh, she was stuck with these. So we went and saw a couple of things that were really interesting. We went and saw um, a Gauguin exhibit, and it was marvelous. It was his paintings, and they were so beautiful. And you could go right up and touch them. Um, in America, if you're going to an art museum, you, they have guards. You get, you get closer than, say, three feet, and there's somebody going to discuss it with you, okay? But in our case, we were allowed to go right up and look at the paintings. As an artist, I thought that was just so interesting. So we had an exhibit of him, and then we also, he was also, it was in there was um, uh, another American artist that was big. So that was a, that was a huge thing for me. I mean, I really, not only did I just love it, but um, Uh, just really enjoyed the afternoon doing that and seeing the museum. And she, I, I, I got to give it to her. She, I mean, I know we were never going to be buddies and I would never hear, never want to hear from me again, I'm sure. But um, we did at least have to share that nice experience. And, you know, so that was good, right? So Goodwin, I think, felt kind of bad about it because um, uh, you know they were old friends and stuff. And I offered to pay for the locksmith and the electrician. She wouldn't hear of it. And then I later learned that her son was um, had autism, or no, he was bipolar or something. Something had happened, and he and uh, couldn't work and. It was a thing, so anyway, I was sorry, you know, about that. So anyway, back to, now we're back, and we're back from Poland, and Goodman and I are shopping in Berlin, right? And, and looking at all the fancy people dressed to the nines, which makes the idea that the galoshes being 
perhaps I understand where she was coming. Not totally get it. Because I, I mean, I just, you know, I guess in the States you'll see all kinds of people anywhere shopping. It wouldn't just be somebody, you know, like that. So we're, uh, we're running late. Goodwin's finding all these things that she wants to have and, and you know, for her store. And, and she's, uh, she's having a blast, man. She is buying stuff like crazy. And I'm saying, man, aren't we supposed to be dinner? Aren't we supposed to be going to dinner? Your dad's having dinner for us tonight. Don't you think we have to get back? Oh, no, it won't matter. He won't care. Um, he had all these guests come to meet his daughter. And they'd all had dinner by the time we got there. Seriously. And Dad was mad. What do you mean yeah, he won't he care? Lie. He just, he was just absolutely furious with her for that. I mean, you know. And I understood it. I mean, you know. Um, and then her friends were all, you know, they were, of course, I was all German. And they had uh, known each other for years and so forth like that. And then Goodwin introduced me and as an artist and all that stuff. And then she, I could have killed her. Um, then she says, and you know, she says, my friend here, we think is the daughter of Albert Einstein. What? Well, you know, it's not that I'd mind her saying that, but you got to imagine who she said it to. This was a, this was a country that rounded up 6 million Jewish people and killed them, right? And I thought we could have left that conversation in the States. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm not saying any of those people were involved in any of that, though. No one ever admitted to doing it anyway, right? If they weren't on trial, certainly no one was going to fess up to it, right? And I'm not saying anything bad about any of your guests, so it probably sounds like I am, and I'm sorry. But I just thought, okay, yeah, let's, um, let's bring that up. That's marvelous, right? But anyway, that was all. So... Her friends were having trouble kind of understanding my English. In fact, Goodwin once made the comment. She said she knew that she could really understand English when she could understand anything I said. So I said, I had a running joke. She says, so speak to you in your, or speak to them in your cartoon voice. I'll understand you better about what you're saying. So if any of you ever watched Boris and Natasha and Squirrel, that's the going to go squirrel, squirrel. Must kill moose and squirrel, remember, Natasha and Boris? So, then I spoke like this. Everybody understood exactly what I said, and I can do that better when I'm a little drunk, but... Um, and the, that, that was... Uh, apparently that was a hit, because they could then understand what I was saying. Which, you know, is always a good thing, right? So anyhow, so we we the dinner was uncomfortable only because um, we came in late. It was totally rude, and I I didn't know what she said in German if she wanted to blame it all on me. Because if I were her, I would have done that. I would have blamed it all on me, rather than because her dad was so mad. I would have said, oh, you know, it is. I have this foreigner with me, and you know, would have said something like that. You know, that's it. I don't think she, I don't know if she threw me under the bus with that or not, but there was this feeling of kind of save your own skin quick, right? Um, let's see. So anyway, we um, I had done a I, I did, her dad asked me for a painting one, asked me if I could do a painting, and I had sent it to him. And he was so happy that. I, apparently the next birthday, um, he got this painting I had sent him, and apparently he was very happy. And apparently I was not, I was not the guest pariah that I kind of thought I had been, because I did something else when I was in their house. I broke something. I don't remember what it was. And I think I blocked it out. Sort of a bad memory, but I'm pretty sure I broke something of theirs too. Nobody said anything. Uh, <laughs> it's just. Oh, nobody said anything, and I'm so glad they didn't, you know. Anyway, it's sort of the, I felt a little like of the bull in the china closet, you know, in the china shop with, you know, running around with them. But uh, anyhow, Goodwin 
So uh, one of the things I had done for our trip with Gudrun, okay, was I had um, said, look, I, I'm just going to take a few things and uh, I don't really have the budget to do a lot of shopping. So if you want anything, I'm happy if you, um, uh, if you want to, um, uh, you know, use, use my suitcase. I'll bring an extra suitcase and that way you won't have to pay for shipping and you'll make a big, bigger profit. I mean, why not? I wasn't going to use anything, right? So, this was, of course, this was before 9-11, but there was still security at the airport. Okay? And, um, and that was back, you know, they had all this security at the airport, okay? And, We we went to the airport. Dad dropped us off. It was all very nice, friendly. It was it was a little chilly, but still okay, right? We weren't a little chilly at the airport, I will say. But um, uh, so her, you know, we're waiting to get on the airplane and. Gudrun disappears, that some some security come for Gudrun, and she doesn't come back. And we're we're waiting to get on the plane and she's not there. And I don't know, her husband's gonna meet us at the airport. I don't know what I'm gonna tell him, because she's just not there. And I'm going, oh my God, now what? Now what, right? And I don't know if she's, you know, she has a way of saying things that maybe she angered some officials not understanding that, you know. <laughs> I could see that happening for sure, right? But I, for the life of me, I didn't know what had happened to her, okay? And uh, so, um, She didn't come, and I finally got on the airplane. I had to decide whether I was going to just not get on the airplane, or I think I figured I'd just go home. I mean, you know, I don't know anybody, and I I don't know how to call her dad or anything, and so I just figured that, that we'd I I could I didn't know what to do, so I just got on the airplane. Makes sense. Well, just what else could you do? Well, I don't know. I got, and then she got on the airplane right before we took off. Right well, before. You were nervous, Nelly. Well, you know what I mean? I don't do well with stuff like that. John knows. He'll tell you. Mm -hmm. I, I do mm -hmm. not do well with people screwing around and doing stuff like that. You better not be doing that on my trip, right? <laughs> I just don't. I don't like it. You know, I, I just don't. <laughs> I don't like anything like that. That's just not okay. And um, so it turned out that... Uh, she had um, in her suitcase. Uh, all right, let's just back it up. In, she had gone to like when we told you we were at like that Costco kind of place in Germany, and she had bought these little pieces and they're like little metal things, and they melt in your tea. And however the shape they make, they tell a fortune. Apparently that's something they do in Germany, as a um. um you know, like a Christmas tradition, New Year's or Christmas tradition. And she had bought some of those. And when the x-ray machine x-rayed her bag and they picked that up, they didn't know if it was a bomb or what it was that she had. And um, so they had hauled her in to explain it. And of course, you know, she explained it and she was gone a long time. So I think they had to take everything out of her bags and it was a thing at that point, right? So, uh, so she gets on. She says, "Yeah, they wanted to know what all that stuff was." And all I can tell you was, remember, she had one of my bags that she had. I had given her one of my bags. 
to use to um, hold her stuff in. And when they had asked me, did anybody pack your bags or any of that? I mean, I, I, I didn't even think about it. So, oh no. Now, can you imagine? I have no idea what she's bought. I don't know what any of this stuff is for, right? So she loaded up your bag. She's with a loaded bunch up of my stuff. bag with crap like this. Sorry. And you have no idea what's in it. And I, no, I didn't know. It just said, sure, take the bag. I think that's perfect. Perfect um, setup for a movie. Yeah, I have no idea what's in the bags, right? And she's she did that. Do you know what I mean? She she man, yeah. So um anyway, that I I I don't my little rule now is I don't care how much of a friend you are. I'm not, you can't carry anything in my luggage. I don't care. I'm not bringing anything extra for you. You're on your own. That was my dear lesson, right? Because I'd probably still be in Germany trying to explain all that stuff. You know, and then she'd probably be, you know, because I mean, you weren't supposed to, remember that was the whole thing. You weren't supposed to let anybody do it, right? You were supposed to do your own bags and all that stuff, remember? Absolutely. That was the, um, Um, so anyway, uh, then we get on the airplane and there's just a few things, a few things that I remember getting on that particular flight because so much had changed from the last time I had flown, you know, with the bag security and all that had been heightened. And, um. They had they um they had me um they were passing out forms that um you had to sign if you were American and fill out that said in case the plane went down what relatives you'd like um contacted. <laughs> I sure does give you a vote of confidence, doesn't it? Yeah, just getting on the airplane and that's the thing. And it was interesting because when I had asked for one of those um forms the stewardess looked at me and she said you're an american i'm going because i guess i don't know how where i was dressed you know no galoshes so how would she know right didn't have any galoshes on so only americans wear galoshes apparently apparently i was dressed well enough where i was mistaken for being in germany i mean i tried man i tried <laughs> you're an american oh yeah i am oh well then you get one of these and then gudrun says well I want one. And they said, you're German. You don't get one. Well, oh, what if my husband wants to know what happened to me? Right? You know what? My husband wants to know. And I said, listen, uh, my husband will call him up and tell him that we're both dead. How's that? <laughs> That's good. We'll be fine. Someone will call you. Someone will call him, right? Well, I know you you laugh about this stuff now, but um, I, and and I do you know I do laugh a little bit about how all this worked. But I think about that trip back then, and seeing East Germany right after the war. I mean, right after the wall came down, and that was wonderful. It was just something. So I don't think it would be the same if we went back today. Because a lot would have changed. And that was a, uh, that was a really lovely trip. But as time went on, you know, that was back in 91, but by the time after 9-11 happened, um, Then security at the airports got really strict. When George and I, I remember George and I taking a trip to Hawaii one year back in the 90s. And um, he had brought back a spear gun as a souvenir and it wouldn't fit in his suitcase. So he happily walked on board the airplane with the spear gun. <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. 
and was shocked when they took it away from him. But they didn't throw him in jail or anything like that because this wasn't, you know, nothing had happened. But I still remember him just going on the airplane with his little spear gun, see. But uh, I think I would like the painting a little closer to me. John, can you switch screens? Or is that possible? Uh, sure. Gonna, okay, when you mean closer, just... I want, and I want where my face is. Up, you want to just look. Yeah, I'm looking up. That's hurting my neck. I want to look oh, straight Oh, I don't here. want to hurt your neck. We're going to switch cameras here. We've tried Not this. Not cameras. We're just switching monitors. Monitors. We're switching monitors. Let me just... Make, um, oh, it's right here and here. Okay. Well, I have to look up too much to see the painting, and I need to look kind of straight at it. Um, okay. So we're switching. There we go. That kind of... What that does is it allows me to back up from the picture and see what I've got, which I haven't been, you know, which I couldn't do otherwise. There, is that okay then? Yeah, that's fine. Um, Again, that's why we're doing what we're doing. Well, this is our test, right, to see what we think, right? Yeah. And uh, that way I can so... I might eventually be able to... Do that. Use that top one to show you what we're actually broadcasting. Yeah, that might be better than this. I don't need to see my face there. You know, you're talking to someone that lives like a vampire and then drapes the mirrors most days. So, <laughs> reality's scary. You know. <laughs> Anyhow, so back when Cinema and I were went to France. I had a good friend. She was a client. Well, she really wasn't a good friend, but she was a client. Bought a lot of artwork from me, and we had become, I don't know, at one point I think maybe we were friends, and not so much now. But um, anyway, we, we had been in this beautiful, we were in Paris, and we had just gotten through having a lovely lunch where they brought all the desserts out. If you, if you, Remember how restaurants will have like four or five desserts you can eat? These guys. Back in the good old days. They, um, they, they, um, they had a platter of a, a, a little tiny bit of each dessert they had rather than just have to pick one if you wanted. And I've never seen anybody else do that. That was so nice. I mean, I'm telling you what, that was really, um, that was just lovely. So anyway, so Cinema and I had lunch and then we went over to this neat, neat store and they had this, what they call Duom glass. And they had um, this letter opener that was um, absolutely gorgeous. And the, um, it, the, the, the handle of it was a, a running horse with a mane and everything. It was the prettiest thing I'd seen. And I just thought I knew the person that would really like this because uh, she was a, a multimillionaire and had everything. And unless you went to Germany, you weren't going to see that. And I bought it for her as a gift. I thought she'd love it. And um, so I, I took it on the airplane. I, I went through customs with it. And I got about, oh, I don't know, uh, five seconds before security came running. And... Um, Want to know why on earth I was bringing a knife on the airplane. And it never occurred to me as a letter opener. Of course it was a knife. And it's just, I didn't, you know what I mean? I wasn't translating it like that. And um, uh, they explained I couldn't couldn't have it with me. It's right after 9-11, okay? And, um, and the thing about the, 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 the rule I'd heard about in France was if even if their at fault. It's always your fault. If you want some help, you better make sure that you explain it's your fault. And in that case, it was my fault. So I was profusely sorry. Okay. 
profusely sorry, you guys. I was, I was very sorry. I, I didn't think about it. So, anyway, they let us board and they checked that. Somehow they checked that for me or got it in a suitcase or whatever. But they decided I wasn't an international threat. Just a stupid American who couldn't follow rules, maybe. Probably closer to that. So, uh, but that brings me back to when Cinnamon and I went to France with my friend Kathy. That was back after 9-11. That was my second trip to France. And I won't tell the whole trip, but I think, I think what was probably germane to the subject I'm talking about now is, uh, you know, luggage and bringing stuff on the airplane and so forth. So, in, um, when we got to, to, when we got to, um, France, we were just happened to be sitting on the side of the plane where you could see the luggage being, um, unloaded. And, the French were on like a day or two from going on strike. Uh, and they were throwing the air, they were throwing the Somebody luggage around like they hated now. everybody. And it was just, it was like that commercial with the gorillas. Remember they did a commercial one time about that, that they just got to film those guys. Cause that's what they were doing. I promise you, that's what they were doing. And um, uh, Seth had to change brushes now and do something else. Okay, you move those. There, I guess over here. No, I, there's those little brushes, and we move the pot. I guess the one little black pot I had here. Okay, I'll use this one. So, anyhow, the, uh, trying to think about that. So, when we went to pick up her bag, it was toast, man. It was ripped. And, I mean, it was kind of ripped. It was ripped, but, you know. So, it took about, I don't know, a couple hours to get anybody to come talk to us about her bag. I mean, was, that's what it seemed like. I mean, it wasn't that long, but it sure seemed like that. And, uh, let's see, I want to do one more little thing here. My tape. So anyway, they, they, they came around and were they were talking to us about the about the bag, and they told her that they wouldn't give her any money for it, but that she could take it into into the into the town. And I've forgotten the city, you guys. It's been a while, right? And she could take it there and get it fixed. But they weren't. That was it. Now, it happened to be about two hours where, where we'd have to take the bag from where we where our house was, our rental house. So, so she ended up uh, getting it fixed. And the first time she went back, her husband had come over on vacation. And the first time it came back, and I know Kathy's listening. And, come on, Kathy, this was nuts. You know, <laughs> I'm sorry, darling, this was nuts. So the first time she, they, they came and they drove all the way back to town to get this, um, this Carcassonne, I think. Or where, it wasn't even Carcassonne, it was further than that, wherever where they went. And then the, 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 the shop was closed. The French had, had I, we never saw so many holidays as the French had. If uh, everybody, you know, the Catholics all over the world celebrate all the saints, but if they, they have a saint, they take the day off, man. It's a good deal, right? I mean, you get a you get a guaranteed day off, apparently. So 
So anyhow, the um, so then they they tried a second time and finally got it got it uh, fixed and repaired. Oh, and then they had to go pick it up too. They had to drop it off and then go pick it up. So it was a thing. So that's kind of where you know. And I think her husband's only there for a week. But anyway, a lot of it was spent, you know, worrying about this bag. So I remember asking her. So is there? So what's going on with this bag? You know, because it's just a suitcase, right? So what's going on with the bag? Is there some something special about this bag? She said no. There had been a prize she'd gotten when she was selling Amway. So I said it wasn't like some heirloom bag. She said, oh no. But you know, it wasn't. But anyway, she got it fixed. But conversely. So you've heard this story, but I, this is a cautionary tale for those of you not. John and I, when we took our trip last year to uh, Barcelona and Venice, we flew to Florida from Texas. And uh, um, when we got to the hotel, it was like one in the morning. And uh, so we went to unpack something out of the bag and realized that the zipper had been totally ripped. Totally, 100%. So it was, it was not, you couldn't close it at all anymore. It was just the whole tab was gone. Well, the, the, it was a the totally zipper wasn't useless. there anymore. The zip part. Now, here's, here's what, you, what you, we would like to share with you is that if we had checked the bag before we left and looked at our suitcase, before we left the um, the airport, if we'd looked at the bags over, because it was one in the morning, and you're tired, right? We had an hour to the hotel, so it's probably midnight. We had a long day of traveling now, and I think there had been some delays. There had been, right? Yep. Um, oh, yeah. you know, always. So we were. I mean, we were tired, you know. So. Um, we didn't check it, huh, we didn't. And so when we got in, but if we had of, we would have been able to claim the insurance on the bag, which we had. And also the, the, the airport would have done something for us, maybe. Depending on the airlines, some airlines have just a whole row of rack of suitcases behind you that um, that they can they can get in a, at a glance and, and do something. So his word to the wise. Yeah, so those are just something if you thought about it, you know, you would have might have known to do that, right? But you know, we didn't and then when our luggage got lost this last trip in Venice we didn't have luggage insurance either through our credit card or anything because it was a free flight miles and we didn't think to do it. So we were just, what's the expression? SOL, right? I think that's the old expression. That's the old expression. So those are the kind of things that you want to keep in mind. And then I think about back when we had taken a shuttle over on a cruise a couple years ago uh, to the to the cruise port from the hotel. There's a, they had the offer these shuttles, and um, uh, the um, guy let us out. Um, it was very crowded. All these buses and stuff were putting up, pulling up, and he let us out, and I was on a scooter. I couldn't walk. My knee were, knees were bad. I had a scooter. I was standing on the curb. John was, guy unloaded our suitcases kind of, well, not kind of, he unloaded, unloaded our suitcases onto the, um, onto the curb. And uh, it wasn't even, it was in the street. And this bus pulled out and ran over our, all our, um, our, our computers and cameras and stuff that was in John's backpack. 
And I remember we had to buy another computer in, uh, where, where was that, John? Uh, San Juan. San Juan. We bought another computer there. And uh, and nobody would take responsibility. The bus driver nope. said it wasn't his fault. If it had happened on the airplane, the, the, the trip insurance would have paid for it. We had insurance up the wazoo on that thing, and nobody was willing to um, to pay for it. Except Apple. But Apple more did the warranty on it. And we have Apple Care. We always get Apple Care, and they go, "What happened?" We told them, "We go, okay, we didn't have this conversation. So what happened? It, it just broke." Yeah, they, so they just fixed it. they fixed it. Apple Care. Fixed it. Yeah, that's why we're Apple people. It yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah, they, they were absolutely marvelous, weren't they? Yep. So, anyhow, that was the the gist of that. But it was interesting. It was just, it was interesting in that. Uh, you know, you, 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 you know, I tell these stories because if, you know, if you travel, you don't travel a lot, you might not ever hear that, you know, you just, you can just avo have anybody avoid some of the stupid stuff that happened to us, you know. Um, well, you think about how many trips we've taken, how many miles we've gone, I would say we've been most, most fortunate in most of our escapades. Oh yeah, because even then, and, the, and even then, we lost the luggage up in Venice. We got it back, and the lady said people never get it back. The, she goes, you got all four of them back. That's very un, that's just unheard of. Nobody gets it all back, and you know. Um, yeah, so you, you yeah you think about uh, you know I think about all these things, um, and um, and again I feel like we've been very we've been very very fortunate in um, in our dealings with with travel and all the things that we've traveled about you know about and, you know even when you're traveling on a cruise ship you can um, they'll go through your stuff and if they don't like what you've taken they'll um, they'll confiscate it <laughs> like for instance certain certain um, well, one lady tried to bring a coffee pot on board, and you know, they had, there's always a big table there at the cruise ships where they, they just go three and sigh and just take back stuff that people tried to bring on board that they think they can't live without, right? It's kind of kind of funny too, right? It is. I'm going to dry this one more time. Ooh, go for it. Here she goes, drying one more time. So, I'm still staticky. I don't know what I can do about that one, but at least you don't have to listen to the hair dryer. Let's go for that. Let's be happy for the little, the little game. Where is that little? Okay. Um, Good quality, more CPU usage. Well, I don't think I don't have any other controls over that little suppressor. So how's the, how's the how are people liking the color that we've got going on here? Anybody notice the difference in the quality of the color on the paintings? Has anybody really noticed anything we're doing? Is anybody out there? Hello? Is this thing on? Well, that's not a bad thing to ask, don't you think, John? No, I think it's a good thing to ask. How's this compared to what we had before? Do you like it more, less, not at all? Please select one of the following. Yeah, well, we do kind of want to know, right? just want to know yeah we just we just we really do just want to know 
Yes, it's very clear and I think vivid, a vivid color picture. It's what? Very vivid colors. It's gorgeous. It's clearer and lighter, lighter white, lighter white, lighter, less yellow. Yeah, the other one did push yellows. Didn't notice anything different in the colors. Michelle, you should have your eyes checked. Just saying. Colors. There's a big difference in the colors. Yeah, huge. Even I can tell you that, right? From somebody that plays with colors all the time. But, uh, Okay. They're shaking up my Posca pen here. Is that what that noise is? This is my Posca pen shaking. Man, it's noisy. Okay, good. Sounds good, right? I don't know if anybody heard it, but I did. All right. I'm not impressed with that. Just use a tiny brush. You moved all my, you moved that little jar I had of tiny brushes somewhere. No, that's impossible. I didn't touch any brushes. Yeah, you did. There was a little jar of dark brushes. You know. Oh, yeah, I had to move that one. See? See what he said? He had to move it. <laughs> See? There. That's why there was so much room over here. Yeah, just so much. <laughs> Sure was nice with all that room. Yeah, put it back, man. Put it back, right? Here, let me move the lid. Sure, you should do that. Yeah, well, look at this stomp around here. Hear that stomping? Honestly. Stomping, stomping, stomping. Stomping, right? So. Man, you um, want everything. Yeah. But Gudrun and her husband stayed for, you know, another. They kept the German house going. And uh, then they, there was a problem with their visa, and uh, they ended up going back to Germany. And just as a side note, Gudrun's, Gudrun's husband Wolfgang, you know his parent, his, you know he was probably born during the war, and his mother left the family, left him for a rich a German banker, and he never saw his mother. And for some reason, after the war, they still were able to keep that. There was a bank in America and here. And um, for, um, the, um, toward the end, they had a reconciliation of her life. And his sister did too, and spent a lot of time with her. But uh, Goodwin went over a couple times a year to um, look in on this lady and everything. Uh, Wolfgang was really, I don't think he ever forgave her for, for him, for her leaving like that. But um, anyhow, she, um, she, uh, she left all her money to them. And so they got her condo and are in Germany living happily ever after, I guess. I haven't talked to them in years. Uh, but that was sort of the, you know, the, um, the upshot of, you know, them. I say that, you know, that just... I'm almost done with this painting. I think I timed the story time pretty well, don't you, John? Oh, once again, my queen, you're brilliant. Well, you know, I don't know if anybody finds that stuff interesting or not. It was just, it was just. Who was Peggy? Peggy? Joel says, Ginger Cook, who was Peggy? I think friends of the judge and Lucille. 
Oh, she's doing it. She's doing history. Oh, I don't know. I think of that guy. It's a little side angle from the uh, pallet camera. I know. All these things we can do. We're in control now. We go right back to the pallet. I know, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Very interesting story and a good painting. That's from Lisa. Thank you. You had a lot of fun in there, you know, in Germany. And um, it was it was interesting. I mean, uh, it did rain. I think we could have used the galoshes, not to put too fine a point on it, but I think we could have, honestly, you guys. I, I thought it was sort of funny, but, you know, people get, you know, uh, my sister was sort of like the Imelda Marcos of our family in that, she loves shoes, and I really never like shoes. I wear them, but I never like them. I found shoe shopping to be tedious and tiresome. Where my sister could have gone shoe, shoe shopping forever and just absolutely uh, loved, loved it, right? So you're, I'm with you about you're, shoes. Are you zooming too close in on here for me? I can't see the whole painting. Oh, my queen, let me adjust that for you. I can't see the whole painting here. I don't know what we've got going anymore. There we go. Thank you. I just, uh, I you know. I'm going to zoom in uh, and get the action. Yeah, okay. Well, that's good, but at some point i got to be able to just see what I'm doing here. Picky, picky, picky. So I think we're ready for Monday show. You think that we can make, make this work for Monday, right? Yeah. Well, that's important. I mean, you know, we want to be able to be able to do that. Because uh, uh, just get my lights and darks now on my painting. Just oops. Pamela says, brushes have replaced my shoe shopping. Now I love shopping for brushes. I know, and it just, it's nice, isn't it? Because <laughs> they wear out. People don't understand that. They wear out. Maybe you weren't so abusive to them and talk to them. Yeah, maybe so, John. I mean, I'm not saying that's not true, just... It's just a little final touches on this picture, but like I say, we're like about 99% um, done. These are meadows are fun. You can put all the little flowers in them and stuff like that. When we're it. just um, why don't you find me a frame, darling? We'll see what we got going here for this. May I get that for you, my queen? You can. That tells if I sometimes I think I've told you guys this. If I put it in a frame, the other person we went to see was Gudrun had a sister, and we went to see her too. 
And uh, again, not quite as so much of a sock folder as um, as her um, as her friend, but she was a sock folder too. And uh, her husband was very cute. He, he, they commissioned a painting from me. That was sort of nice. It sort of I did a fun painting for him. Did did paintings for some of these guys that were, you know, everybody was nice. And I don't remember what I did, but I, I screwed up something in her sister's house too, as I recall. That's a surprise that ever spoke to me. Unintentional. But you know how these things are, just really just makes you, you know, I just don't want to stay at anybody's house anymore when I travel. How's that? Well, I want to stay at a hotel, so if I screw something up, the there, uh, the hotel takes care of it. It's not my problem anymore. What do you guys think? Think that's a Ooh, let's dirty up more brushes. Yeah, a little fan brush action. Yeah, yeah. that's a rarity. Yeah, people yeah. are in for a treat on that one. I never do fan brushes, but sometimes a painting like this. You just can't help yourself. Well, they, they're kind of required, aren't they? So there you go. That's that sort of soft look that I'm looking for the with the fan brush that Okay, so now it's got the frame. I feel like um, I feel like you need to give me a good, good dry. I'll do that. I'll do a good dry on that. Oh, I'll test a... that hair dryer one more time. Yeah. Well, wait, wait, wait. Let me change one setting before That's you do that. Change. One okay. setting. Boom. Don't do it yet. Just no. Wait. I won't. I'm going to put a little bit of zinc wait. white on something again. Audio. While you're do waiting to do that, I'm going to just do a little zinc white here. Filter. Okay, I'm going to change it to the other setting. Depression level. We'll try it there. Okay. So we're going to see how it does this time. All right. Ready to dry when you are. I'm just about ready to dry. I'm just, like I say, I wanted to do a... Sometimes when you put zinc white, you know, back by a hill. Pushes it back. Pushes it back. I said that. There, I think a little bit of that. Push that hill back. I want something a little brighter here. Back here. I want to bring your eye back here just a little bit. Not that much. <laughs> it says... You're really trying yeah. to pull me back there. Then, yeah, no, you just gotta. Sometimes you want just a d drop of something. All right, there we go. Let's see. That's again. That's too bright. That's just, there you go. Okay, I'm gonna dry it and uh, then we'll put it in the frame. Okay. No, is he drying it this time? Let me know if I'm staticky. Now, if it's suppressed as much as it was before, am I still staticky, or can you understand what I'm saying? As if I ever have anything important to say. Blah, blah, blah. I really appreciate you all joining us today. If you haven't subscribed to us, please do. Okay, so how was the sound that time from me as she was drying, and could you hear it? Oh, now I'm not static according to my buddy lives. Okay. Not so much the dryer. The dryer is louder. Is the dryer too loud? 
the dryer sounds underwater. Well, that's all right. It's, it's, we can try one other one. This one has some sound. Can't hear you. Can hear dryer. Well, that's Luann. Nobody else can hear me. That has to be a Luann issue. See, that was... That was 40. Let's try one more. 60 is the max. Let's try the max next time. Okay. We're going to do one more test. All right. Well, that's good because I've got a... I've got a... Um... Not too bad on the dryer. I can understand you. Okay. That was 40. I'm going to try the 60 setting and see what it does. As soon as the queen is ready to dry again. Well, I gotta do something here, so let's see if I can. You just take your time. We're not going anywhere. I gotta just do this with the. So that that wasn't the tower wasn't showing up. So so it's like either lighter or darker than something else. So. All right. Now that it show now it shows up. Yeah. That's that's better. Yeah. I'm liking it. Yeah, I'm just, you know, just when you think you've got it, you just, there we go. All right, now I'll try drawing that, and you're going to see if you yeah, like I'm that try better. To one more time. This is our second setting. <laughs> All right, so now I keep drawing one more time. And I don't know if you're hearing it better or worse. It has just compared the one we did right before this one. That's what we want to know. How do we compare? Can you hear me any better? Is the dryer too loud? How's it compared to the very beginning? Blah, 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 blah. And how did it? It's worse. Okay. Okay. I thought 60 might be too much. Same loud, they are uh, dryers loud, can't understand you. Okay, so that was the wrong way to go. Well, we appreciate everybody letting us do this test stuff because that's what needs to happen here. So let's take it all the way. Let's go, let's see, we, we did 20, let's go to 20 this a time. Okay, I'm gonna need one more drive from you, boss. Okay, that's fine because I had a little bit more of the zinc white I can do down in here. Now the very first one of the first tests, Carla, I think now you're not getting a static since we're doing this new testing. So you're not getting a static. I think that's what we're going for. Now we can get the hair dryer suppressed a little bit more. That's what we're going to try. And we may have to stick with the 40 setting. I'm trying the 20 setting next time here. The hair dryer might get suppressed the more it runs. The first test, okay. Okay, so I'm trying it again? Yep, try it again. Here we go. This is test number three. Test number three, we're at 20. If you want to know if it's better now or worse. It was the first setting at 40, the best setting for this that we're doing right now. Again, this is only a test. Hmm. Yes? I should have been an announcer. I could have had that so job. So how did, how, did, how did you do with that one? Well, get away for the reports to come in. Sounds like a dryer. So the dryer one. Let so what does that mean? Well, wait. Liz is saying the last one was better. Here's dryer's louder. Loud, no John heard. Dryer is too loud and can't understand you still. You're still loud, but could hear you. I can't hear John in the beginning, then I got, I could as you continue. So it takes the software to understand what it's doing before it'll suppress one. First was better, I want to say quit mumbling. <laughs> That's a Michigan mumble, baby. That's what we do in Michigan, we mumble. I'm going to go back to the 40 because that was the best. And we'll try that during the live and we'll see what it does. Okay. 
All right. So you want you just wanted to see where you're at, right? Yeah. I just wanted one more shot of that because they had an offering to do a setting, one other setting place. So if I get a chance to work on it over the weekend, I might, might try it with Liz. Drives by your voice is too low. I'm a soft-spoken individual. I never raise my voice. Yeah. We'll have to do some testing. Further testing will be done. Well, you know, sometimes that's just what it needs, right? Yep. Okay, I'm going to go with... All right, let's just put it in the frame, then I'll finish it up if there's anything I have to do. Yes and yes? I am here to serve you, my queen. Would you like to have fries with that order? Sure. Let's see how we did with the final. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What? What? <laughs> this is just the Aho stuff. <laughs> uh, I'd love to do the Aho with you. Got to back it up a little. Oh, I can do that now. Watch me. Oh, that's kind of cute, huh? I think it looks great in that frame. You yeah, don't like that frame? I do. I think it's kind of cute. I said I think it's kind of cute, right? Well, yeah, but the way you said it. No, that I, I wasn't did. a believable one. It wasn't? It's not good if it wasn't believable. I didn't see nothing, right? Somebody's going to enjoy this painting. I hope so. How could they not? I hope they like it. I think it was it's even a, shot with a new camera. Yeah, it was shot with a new camera. It's the first of our. Uh, Now, for the purple members that are out there, very soon I'm going to be sending out an email from our new email server. So be looking for that. I'm talking hopefully before 5, before 5 or 5.30 tonight. So if you're a purple member, be looking for that. I don't know why I'm having trouble with these um, pens here. Well, you might need to press them to reload them, shake them up, press them down. Yeah, you got to shake them up a little bit, but... Shake them up, press them down, turn around. Yeah. While well, she's I doing thought... that, let's, let's zoom in. Let's, let's look at some of the details, shall we? I'll give it a second to focus. Oh, somebody gets in my way. Okay. All right, so there's not, when you look at the details, when you see it up close. Look at how many colors there are in each brush stroke. Look at the clarity. Well, that just looks like, <laughs> what clarity? You get that close to it, you're thinking, you know, Ginger, that's just a hot mess here. I don't know what you got going there. That looks like a hot mess to me. You just can't appreciate the finer things in life. Well, I appreciate you. Oh, you're so sweet. I am. You must want a good dinner tonight. I do. <laughs> I do. Oh, you bribe me. That's yeah, just funny. You're yeah, I think, funny we're, I think we're okay with that. I think that... Uh, uh, I think it's a great painting. I think that's a fun one. All right. I think I'll sign it right here. Where? Here. Really? What, here? I yeah, have here. in the path. Yeah, right there. I wouldn't want it. That's too pretty over on that side. Okay. Signing it there. I hope everybody had fun with our story time on my trip to Germany. And my friends, you know, <laughs> letting someone, let someone take, a, take us. Let me take a suitcase for you. Not, <laughs> not doing that anymore. Not. You know, we don't even, we pack our own suitcases now. We don't even pack each other's suitcases. I don't suitcases. even know John, John packs his. I, he doesn't pack mine either, right? No. If you, if I don't know what's in your suitcase. You don't want to have to be the one explaining. You don't want to have to be explaining things. Explaining things <laughs> to anybody, right? That's what I say. You don't want to be explaining. 
No splaining going here. No splaining, right? Okay, there we go. I need a little something right there. All right, well that's a that's a fun one. I uh, we'll be doing a, a you know live a tutorial on Monday. This is probably the only story time we're going to be doing this week. But uh, you never know for sure. But you never know for sure. We'll see if we let keep it. You know, uh, Ooh, make sure me, you've got the. Um, uh, let me check. Um, make sure that you've got your your uh, your bell on. You have your and, bell on. Mm -hmm. Oh, your bell. Got it. Turn your bell on so that you can. If we are doing something, you can hear it, right? Okay. Let's so that see. that would be my uh, my take on what I would think would be would be helpful. Yes. And uh, again, all these things are, you know. Uh, let's see. Hey, we had a couple of donations come in. I was so busy playing with my new cameras, I didn't notice them. I oh, apologize thank you. for that. Uh, Anna Maria, thank you very much for your donation, and Miss Jules. I will add you guys on the list there, so we tabulate it at the end of the quarter. End of the quarter is coming up in what two weeks? Yeah, days. yeah, two weeks. Two weeks from today, quarter is over. That'll be the last one we have for a while of the drawings. Yeah. As we continue getting these paintings out, and all the other good stuff we got going on. Yeah. All right. Well, this was fun. I hadn't done anything like this in a while. So this was fun for me. I hope it was fun for you. And uh, we'll see you down the road, you guys. See you down the road. Thanks for watching. And uh, this was really fun. Oh, wait, and, wait. Uh, we can do one more close-up on you and see how my voice is. One second. Do now what now? Okay. You're going to be talking to the camera. I'm talking to the camera, right? And you can say goodbye to people. And then, say I'm goodbye. Go to the, then I'm going to go to the graphics for a little bit. Yeah. So talk a little bit so I can check it. Okay. And I can so, do the right. fine-tuning. This is a test. This is nothing but a test. I'm <laughs> just I'm sorry. I listen, you guys. We know that story times are something we started this year back at this, just right around Christmas, and we've had such a great response. When you when you write a comment that makes such a difference to me, I love hearing from you. Even if you just said love the show, it makes a difference. So we think share it with your friends. If you think they might like it. Uh, uh, Again, thank you very much for watching. John's going to do something fun right now. I'm not sure what. <laughs> I did. We, what did we, you do? we moved it over to the story time closing moments, and okay. we're going to sign off and say bye bye, everyone, and we'll catch you on the next story time. Bye bye, everyone. Catch you on the next story time. <laughs>